In fluid mechanics, pressure has no direction, uh, but it may not be the same everywhere. And in fact, if the flow is at all interesting, typically you will have pressure differences occurring in space and in time uh, as the flow uh, is occurring. So the question I'd like us to study right now is this. If I give you a USB key, on this USB key you would have the pressure um, at each point in space and time. So a big table with X, Y, Z coordinates and every time the local pressure. Um, then how would you compute the net effect of pressure? The direction in which pressure is pushing the fluid everywhere in space. Yes. How would you compute the net effect of pressure? To do this, uh, we have to consider not a single point, but a single small volume inside the fluid. And what we take um, is a cube, an infinitely small but still finite volume cube. Um, and this cube has six sides, and on each of those six sides, you will have one value of pressure. Um, so we have six different pressure values. If you now consider volumes inside the flu fluid, um, then you need to consider for each of those little volumes six different values of pressure, one on each side. Okay. With six different values, what do you do? You ultimately want just one direction. Um, and what you do with these six different values, you take pairs of them. And you're going to take a pair in the x direction, looking at the pressure on that side and the pressure on this side. You can take a pair in the y direction with the pressure on this side and the pressure on that side, and take, then take a pair on the vertical direction with pressure on top and pressure on bottom. And each of those pairs um, is going to be evaluated so that you can compute how much the pressure is pushing upwards, how much is pressing sideways, and how much is pushing forward. Uh, so what we want to compute ultimately is the difference of pressure in the x direction the difference in y and the difference in z. So this is the key concept I would like you to remember. In a fluid, pressure is a one-dimensional scalar field, yes, but the effect of pressure is a three-dimensional field. It is a general direction with an intensity, which describes by how much pressure is pushing uh, and in which direction. Yes, it's a 3D vector field. How do we compute this field? Let's have a look. <clears throat> if we look at the z direction, let's take a look at a, at a actual 3D cube. Uh, a really advanced teacher would have definitely an animation with a 3D cube, uh, uh, perhaps a holographic or a 3D animation on a video, but I just have a stupid cardboard box. Uh, it serves my purpose pretty well. So we have a cube like this. And what we're looking at is side number one. If I can find it, here it is. This is side number one. And on the side of side number one, I have here uh, side number six, which is there. And on the other side, I have side number three. And what we're looking at is the Z direction. So the direction like this. And we want to compute by how much pressure is pushing in the Z direction. And for this, I want to compute the force on that side minus the force on this side here. But to do that, I will um, take the area, and the area turns out to be here dx by dy. Yes. Um, this area I multiply by the pressure applying on 3. This is dy dx multiplied by p3. And to this, I subtract the pressure exerting on the other side, which is here. The same thing, dx dy, but this time with the pressure p6 from side 6. And this is the net force in this direction, in the z lateral direction. Yes. Um, and there's a trick that we play. And take a look at what changed in, this, in these two slides here. Uh, what I did is that I said P3 minus P6. I'm going to express it as the change in z of pressure multiplied by dz. In other words, I take the gradient of pressure in the z direction. How much pressure is changing? with respect to the z direction here. And I multiply this by the space that is separating those two sides, which is, in this case, dz here. Um, and this is a trick that's pretty nice because it allows me to group data together. And we have dy, dx, and dz here. And if I group them together, then I get dv, which is the volume of a cube. 
um, and then I get the net force due to pressure in the z direction here. It is the volume of the cube multiplied by the minus the gradient of pressure in the z direction, the derivative of p with respect to z. Yes, you may be asking yourself why there is a minus there. Um, this is because gradient, so this derivative here, will be positive when pressure increases. And high pressure here, with a low pressure there, means the force will be in the opposite direction. Uh, so force is always towards a low pressure. Um, and this is the reason why we have a minus here. So we've done pressure in the z direction, yes. Um, and now we do the same thing for the x, y directions. So that every time we've got um, the volume of the cube multiplied by the change of pressure with respect to the direction with which I'm interested. Okay, so let's sum this up now into one nice vector value. We say the net force due to pressure on the cube. This is the sum of three components, uh, the components in x, the component in y, and the component in z. And each of those I can write as a function of um, the gradient of pressure in the local direction. So it looks like a pretty cumbersome equation, uh, which is a bit annoying to write. And you can group terms together, but you still get something that is not super pretty. Um, and typically, uh, engineers, when they have to write this many times over, uh, they get tired pretty soon. And the first thing that they uh, come up with is there's got to be a better way to write this. And of course, there is. And this um, brings us to the cool new tool called the gradient operator. The gradient operator is defined as so. It is an operator. It does not mean anything by itself. It's something that you wait um, to be able to, uh, that you're waiting to be able to apply it uh, to a scalar field. Uh, the gradient operator, if you apply it to a scalar field, it will take in the x direction, so multiply by the i unit vector, it will take the change in x of that thing. In the y direction, it will take the change in y of that thing. And in the z direction, it will take the change in z of that thing. Here. So it's just waiting to be applied. Um, now, it shows in which direction and by how much the thing that you're applying it to is getting larger. Okay. So if you have a field of values around you and you are at one value there and you want to see the direction in which um, the highest value around you is, then the gradient of that field of values uh, will tell you that. Um, so now that we have this, we take the force due to pressure. This was the long and painful and ugly equation that we wrote before. Uh, and we replace this by, look at this, tsk, the gradient of pressure. This is super cool. This is very, very, very nice. Um, so um, this is what we, we come up to in the end. If I give you on a USB key a field of values for each point in space, x, y, z, there is one value of pressure. If I give you this and based on that, you want to compute in which direction the fluid is being pushed by pressure. So this is now a field of vectors. Yes, so for, x, y, for each x, y, z position, you have an arrow um, which points in some direction with some length, so you have three dimensions. If you want to compute this, you want to take minus the gradient of pressure, and this will give you the amount of force per unit volume that is applying inside the fluid due to pressure. So here we are. 